Welcome back to another study in the Gospel of John. We've got a few left here, and today we'll be in John 18, 28 through 19, 16. And the title of this is, I find no guilt and crucify him. So Pilate's statement, I find no guilt and the crowd crying out, crucify him. That's the focus of what's happening in these verses. Uh, we're going to do this passage in five points. We'll breeze through these pretty quickly, but five points just kind of get the feel of what's going on here. Uh, first, we're going to notice the irony of the Jews situation. The irony is uh, they're celebrating the Passover while they execute the Passover lamb. And so verse 28 of chapter 18 says, then they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the governor's headquarters. It was early morning. They themselves did not enter the governor's headquarters, so they would not be defiled, but could eat the Passover. So notice right away, they are very concerned that they would be ceremonially clean. They would be righteous in God's eyes. They weren't going to go to um, uh, pagans' uh, headquarters or home because they wanted to be pure and eat the Passover. So the irony is that they're about to execute the lamb that would shed his blood for them if they would be willing, if they would believe. But they're rejecting him. They're going to kill him. They're going to cry out, crucify, all while trying to celebrate God's salvation through a lamb. That's what's going on. Verse 29. So Pilate went outside and s to them and said, what accusation do you bring against this man? They answered him. If this man were not doing evil, we would not have delivered him over to you. Pilate said to them, take him yourself and judge him by your own law. So the Jews are bringing him to Pilate, a Roman governor, and saying, do something about him. And he says, this is your deal. And they said, no, we're, we're bringing him to you. So there's something here. So they're trying to get Rome to do their dirty work to crucify him because they couldn't or else they'd be unclean. They, they couldn't violate the laws that scripture has given all while rejecting the savior that scripture has been pointing to. So the Jews said to him, it's not lawful for us to put anyone to death. And again, I'm going to underline that because I'm underlining here a couple places where the Jews are very concerned about doing the right thing before God as they kill the God man. Verse 32, this was to fulfill the word that Jesus had spoken to show by what kind of death he was going to die. This is most likely a reference to John 12, 32 and 33. Jesus saying that he would be lifted up. Jesus saying that he would be executed. And he predicted that he knew it was going to happen. And this is most likely a reference to that. But, but what you should grab from verses 28 to 32 is the irony of what the Jews are doing. They are trying to uh, please God as they seek to kill God. That's what's happening here. Now we go to point number two, verses 33 to 38 a of chapter 18. The point is, Jesus, the heavenly king, has come to testify to the truth. Verse 33, so Pilate entered his headquarters again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king? Now I'm going to highlight or put a box around king ideas, Jesus ruling ideas. Are you the king of the Jews, Pilate says. Jesus answered, Do you say this of your own accord or did others say it to you about me? Well, we know the answer to that. The Jews were complaining to Pilate that this guy's trying to say he's our king. And now we know that they were concerned because if, if there's some sort of um, problem, internal strife among the Jews, the Romans aren't going to take any of that. The Romans are allowing the Jews to worship in the way they want. They're allowing the Jews to practice their religion as long as they're peaceful and no cause any problems. Well, Jesus is causing a problem in the Jewish culture of the day. He's saying he's the king of the Jews. And so the Jews bring him to Rome saying, this guy's creating a problem. We don't want a problem with you guys. You need to do something about this. So again, Jesus saying, do you say this on your own accord or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, am I, am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you over to me. Now that's interesting. We're going to be talking, we're going to see more king ideas, king language. 
But Pilate's saying, you're subject to their authority. They've delivered you over. You're bound by them. You're arrested by them. That doesn't sound like a king. What have you done? Pilate says, verse 36, Jesus answered, my kingdom sounds like he is claiming to be a king. My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting. I would have let Peter take out his sword and go after you and try to escape the arrest and the betrayal. And my kingdom isn't about that. Isn't about fighting for influence here and now in the way you're thinking of it. My kingdom's differently, different. But he's still highlighting that he's a king. He's got a kingdom. So my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I might not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from the world. Then Pilate said to him, so you are a king. Jesus answered, you say that I'm a king. For this purpose I was born and for this purpose I've come into the world to bear witness to the truth. So I am a king. You've said it right. I am a king and I've come as the king to tell the divine truth, to give the world the truth that it needs. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, what is truth? So Jesus is claiming not only to be king, but to come with a truth. And this is what the whole book of John is trying to drive us to, right? To believe in what Jesus has said, to listen to the king and the truth that he teaches. Because he's been sent as king to this earth. He's been sent by his father. So Jesus is king and he's got a message. So everyone who is of the truth, part of my kingdom, with me, can be characterized by the ones who are listening to my voice. Now, Pilate wasn't listening to his voice. The Jews largely weren't listening to his voice, but some of, some of them were, and some from around the world were. So he's the king, and he's come to testify to the truth. Now we go to point number three, verses 38b to 19.7. This point will show us the declaration of innocence and the call to crucify. So you see... You see Two things go on here. Pilate hearing from Jesus and then declares that he's done nothing wrong. And he'll repeat that. He's innocent. But then you also have the Jews responding, treat him as he's guilty. Crucify him. And that's what John is bringing into our focus. Pilate has declared that he's done nothing wrong. And that's true. But then the Jews will say, treat him as he's done something wrong. Crucify him. Okay, so I'll highlight the instances where Pilate is declaring that he finds no guilt. After he said this, he went back outside to the Jews and told them, I find no guilt in him. So the governor has declared not guilty. I don't see any guilt. But you have a custom that I should release one man for you at the Passover. So do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? Pilate kind of poked in their eye, as it were. They cried out again, not this man, so don't release him, but Barabbas, give us a different criminal. Take this criminal, give us a different criminal. Now, Barabbas was a robber. So again, you see, even in these first uh, couple of verses, you see Pilate say he's not guilty, and the Jews want Jesus treated as if he's guilty. And that's what we're seeing. Then chapter 19, verse 1, then Pilate took Jesus and flogged him. He did treat Jesus as he was guilty to appease the Jews. And the soldiers twisted a crown of thorns. Again, keep, keep hearing the king type of theme in the background also. And put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe, like you would a king. They came up to him saying, Hail, king of the Jews, and struck him with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I'm bringing him out to you so that you may know that I find no guilt in him. Second time he said that. I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out wearing a crown of thorns and a purple robe. Pilate said to them, behold, the man. When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, crucify him, crucify him twice. Pilate said to them, take him yourselves and crucify him. Why? I find no fault, find no guilt in him. The Jews answered him, we have a law. And according to that law, he ought to die because he has made himself to be the son of God. So the Jews are making John's point in the book. John wrote so that you would see, reader, that Jesus is the son of God. The Jews 
are criticizing Jesus, even want him condemned to death for making himself to be or saying that he is the son of God. But again, you see two things going on here. Pilate three times, as which can kind of contrast Peter's denials. I don't know him. I don't know him. I don't know him. Pilate saying he's not guilty. He's not guilty. He's not guilty. And then the Jews repeating, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. So again, there's a declaration of innocence, but then there's a call to crucify him. Next, we go to point number four. Jesus is only subject to the Father's authority. This is found in 19 verses 8 through 11. So there's, there's been a lot about the fact that the Jews have brought him into custody. They've arrested him. They've bound him and brought him to Pilate, the governor. The governor is putting Jesus on trial. So it looks like the Jews have authority over Jesus. It looks like Pilate has authority over Jesus. And again, our point, Jesus is only subject to the Father's authority. Verse 8, when Pilate heard this statement, he was even more afraid. He entered his headquarters again and said to Jesus, where are you from? Another way to say that, who sent you? Why are you here? What do you come to do? Tell me more about what's going on with you. There's something beyond what he can just see, and he knows that. Where are you from? Jesus gave him no answer. Jesus is not obligated to give Pilate an answer. Jesus created Pilate. There's, he's not under his authority. But Jesus gave him no answer. So Pilate said to him, you will not speak to me? Again, an authority type of statement. Do you know that I have authority to release you and authority to crucify you? So Pilate trying to show Jesus, I've got authority. Jesus answered, you would have no authority over me at all unless it had been given to you from above. So notice the connection here. Pilate asks at the end of verse 10, where are you from? I've got authority over you. Jesus says, you don't have that authority. The only authority you have temporally over me is because it's been given to you from above. Where are you from? I've got authority. You don't technically have authority. There's an authority from above that's higher than you is what's happening here. Therefore, he, deliver, he who delivered me over to you has the greater sin. That's speaking of the Jewish people. Therefore, he who delivered me over to you has the greater sin because they're rejecting God's ultimate authority. God's approval and sending and speaking through Jesus. So Jesus is only subject to the Father's authority. He's not subject to Pilate's authority. And he's not subject to the authority of the Jews. And that's what's going on in point number four. And then in point number five, to wrap up this, this, this big picture theme of Pilate saying, I find no guilt in him, and the Jews saying, crucify him, we come to point number five, which is found in verses 12 to 16 of chapter 19, the irony of the Jew situation. Now that's how we started, right? That was our first point. The irony of the Jew situation. They are trying to keep the Passover faithfully while saying crucify the Passover lamb that would be their savior if they would simply believe. Here again, we see an irony in verses 12 to 16. From then on, Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, if you release this man, you are Caesar's friend. Now, they're going to bring up Caesar three times. Again, notice John likes to bring up things in threes to make a point. So they are saying, if you release this man, you're not Caesar's friend. Caesar, the leader of Rome. So, so get what they're saying. Pilate, governor of Rome, small leader under in Rome. If you release Jesus... He's going to cause disruption among us, the Jews. That'll be a problem for Rome. So if you release him, you are not Caesar, the leader of Rome's friend. That's what they're accusing Pilate of. Now that would get attention, his attention. So notice the verse starts, the Pilate wanted to release him. This could mean that he was continuing to argue with them. He should be freed. He shouldn't be guilty. He shouldn't be crucified. But they kind of bring in this last strong statement this kind of trump card, if you will. Like this is the statement to end all of Pilate's arguments. If you release him, you're opposing Caesar. And for Pilate to oppose Caesar, he loses his job, maybe even his life. He can't do that. So he ends up listening to the Jewish mob. 
If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. So the irony is they've got their king in front of them and they're calling for his head, for him to be executed, for him to be crucified. They want him dead. And they are actually looking as if they are siding and concerned with Caesar's reign. If you release him, Pilate, you are an enemy of Caesar. What they're not saying is, but what you can infer here is, and we're not against Caesar. We're not opposed to Caesar. We're trying to keep the peace under Caesar. So they're rejecting their king and putting themselves on the side of Caesar, the Roman king, the created king, the wicked king. That's the irony of their situation. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. That's what they're saying that Pilate's doing. So when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the stone pavement. Notice Jesus on trial in an Aramaic Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation of the Passover. Again, it reminds you that the irony isn't just that they're rejecting their king. They're also rejecting their Passover lamb. It was about the sixth hour. He said to the Jews, behold your king. So here in this point, we're learning, we're reminded of that it's the Passover. They're rejecting their Passover lamb. They're also rejecting their own king. They cried out, away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, we have no king but Caesar. Now it's crystal clear. They're literally saying our allegiance is with Caesar. That is a shocking thing for a first century Jew in Jerusalem to say. They normally didn't operate that way. They didn't like Caesar. They didn't like Rome. They wanted Rome out. They actually thought Jesus would overthrow Rome right then and there. That's why initially some people followed him. But here, his kingdom doesn't look like the kingdom they're expecting. And he got arrested. Doesn't look like he's winning. He's criticizing us, not Rome. Well, I don't like this. I don't like this guy and his claim of king. So at the end of the day, it shows where they're who, which king they're, they're, they're aligned with, which king their allegiance is to. It's not Jesus. They're actually saying here, shockingly, we have no king but Caesar. What a spit in the face of God. What a slap in his face. What a rejection. We have no king but Caesar. So he delivered him over to them to be crucified. So they reject their Passover lamb. That's ironic. They celebrate the Passover while they reject the lamb who could save them. They hail Caesar as they seek to kill the actual king that God has sent them. That's ironic as well. So we see the irony of the Jews situation here. John 18, 28 to 19, 16. You see these two themes kind of coming together. Pilate saying what the reader knows, Jesus is not guilty. But those who reject Jesus saying, we reject our lamb, we reject our king, crucify him. 